and welcome back to another Bob Blast. Hi, I'm Bob Burge, and this is a lesson all about gesso. How I use it in my studio, what I use it for, and just everything that I do in my studio. So as you know, gesso is basically a primer. It's the thing you put on a canvas, usually comes with it, already on it. It's a primer that helps to make your oil paints and your acrylic paints stick better. That's why you want to use a primer. Primers come uh, in kind of a liquid form, and they come, sometimes they come somewhat sandy-ish in a texture, which is very nice, some artists like that. And then there's these super creamy kind, they come really thick, and Again, whether you're putting it on, a, here's a wooden panel. I'll put it on this panel. It comes um, already primed, but I want to see the white primer on this one. You can even stick it on bricks. Oh my gosh, I did a painting, acrylic painting on a brick one time. Just, But I made sure I put a primer on first because that way uh, the paint, again, it will stick better. There are primer brushes. You can always, you know, gesso brushes. You can put it on. I'm going to do that for you also. Or I prefer actually those disposable pieces of quarter inch foam board. You know, the back of the painting, sometimes you throw them away. I don't throw them away. I just cut them up and I use them as scrapers. I'm going to show you how I use it. So here's one of those Joe's Prime Cradle panels, wooden. Beautiful, right? So I'm going to now put on a gesso on this using a gesso brush because it says so on the package, a gesso brush. My gesso is ready to go. Always wet my brush. I dip the brush right into the gesso. It's nice and creamy smooth. Look at that, huh? But I just wanna let you see how I do this. But what I usually do is the edges first. Look at that. Nice big brush. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. Now I'm not worried about texture. In fact, I like texture. So this is, uh, I know some artists prefer really smooth texture, such as portrait artists, some of them, right? And so after this dries, you can actually sand it smooth if you want to. I actually love the texture. So you know, it almost looks like a canvas again, but it's like perfect, right? Now I do the sides first, just like that. Really rub it into the, into the wood, back and forth. Keep your brush wet. Now here you can control the texture. You may not see it very well in this lighting here, but some artists like a lot of texture, as I mentioned, some, some people don't. I happen to like it. So this is that thick, creamy, smooth. It's beautiful. It'll dry usually maybe in about 15, 20 minutes, depends on where you live. I love it. And usually two thin coats is all it takes. Let's move over to paper. Now putting gesso on watercolor paper, 300 pound watercolor paper, that's my favorite. It, you know, it stays flat and I can beat it up a little bit more. All right, so here I have a, a 300 pound watercolor paper and before I even put the gesso on is I mark the back just like that. So when it dries, I know what side's been gessoed. So why do I even put it on watercolor paper? Well, it's because I want the surface to, after it has dried, to react the same way as if I were working on canvas. So that way, if it's either on paper or canvas, I know the, 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 the surface will react the same. Here's my scraper. I use these disposable pieces of foam board. I don't throw them away. I cut them up in little strips. I use it almost like a squeegee. I put a lot on, by the way. And the reason I use these is so I don't have to clean them. I can just throw them away later on. There we go. I could always be a cake decorator, I guess. I love doing this. Look at this. Done. Voila. It's all done. Then on to the next one. Then scrape it off. Throw it, on the, throw it away or use it on the next one. Hey, that's what I use gesso for because it kind of make, makes the playing field the same way whether it's working on a brick, piece of paper, or a canvas, or a wooden panel. I love, get the good gesso. It has more titanium in it. I even use it for my white sometimes. Hey, I'll see you on the next Bob Blast and thanks again for watching. 
Hey, it's me again. Hey, I just wanted to tell you about some workshops that are coming up right away. And this is the beginning of my new season, and it's uh, uh, down in Mexico, in Puerto Vallarta, 10 miles south of Puerto Vallarta, in a place very famously known as the Artist House, also known as Casa de la Artistas. And we have to go down there. I love going down there. This will be, I don't know, sixth or seventh time for me to go down to, to do a workshop. And it's January 20th. Who doesn't want to get out of the United States around January? Go down to Mexico and Puerto Vallarta. It's just us in a village, a fishing village. It's fantastic. You hear the little boats early in the morning. That's where the mountain uh, rivers come down and meet the mouth of the ocean. So you hear the best of both worlds. It's just a fantastic place. And they, we stay there, we eat there, and we paint there. And a couple of side trips to out. I maybe had to go out and look at the whales or something like that. It's a great place. I hope to see you down there. Uh, then my first workshops here in my studio in California is, um, what do we have here? March 26th to the 30th. It's a loosen up five days, loosen up. It's kind of like an art school. I do a demo, you do it, I do another demo, you do it, and back and forth. So we get 10 students there in the workshop fantastic environment by the way you know and uh who wants to uh, not go to california in the winter time so that will be march 26th to the 30th and i can't wait to see you here it fills up and uh, for more information make sure you go to robertburge.com thanks for watching